Hey, what's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek. And on today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we're, uh, we're doing a Let's Play. And um, we're, we're, playing, we're playing Minecraft. Yeah. So today we will be playing Minecraft, but there's a, a drone component to this, so just stick with me. We'll get to that in just a few moments. I did want to give you a quick little tidbit here about what you can expect coming to the channel here in the next couple of weeks. Next week, we have an interview on the LTD podcast, the newest episode with Skywatch. We have a couple folks from Skywatch, the aviation insurance agency that a lot of drone pilots use to cover both their drone as well as the liability involved with their drone flights. I got them on next week. We've also got some drone reviews coming down the pipeline. I haven't had great weather over the past couple of weeks to actually take these out and fly them and test them. Uh, North central Pennsylvania in late January, early February is just it's awful. It's it's really bad. Uh, if it's not too windy or snowy or rainy, it is just bleh out and it looks terrible and it won't demonstrate the true power of some of the cameras that I have sitting to the side here. But as a little bone to you so that you know that I'm not just you know saying it to say it, we do have some cool stuff coming down the pipeline in terms of drone reviews. Let's take a look at what we will be reviewing in the next few weeks. First and foremost, let's just start small. We've got the Autel Evo Nano Plus. We've got the plus combo for this guy. Gonna get a little bigger on the next one. Graduate up to the Evo 2 version 3. And last but certainly not least is this behemoth right here. The X Dynamics Evolve 2. We will be doing a full review on this guy right here and this is by far the largest drone in terms of surface area that it takes up that I have ever covered okay so now that you know i'm not pulling your leg we actually do have some really cool review material coming down the pipeline i hope that we're good i hope that all is forgiven and i hope that my lack of posting content over the past few weeks is just sort of wiped clean but today we are starting our content push with a let's play now on this channel when we do let's plays it is almost exclusively flight simulators that help develop drone piloting skills and even though we are playing Minecraft today, the modding community, modification community, has created a way for people to get an FPV flight simulator and pack it into Minecraft. Now, if you don't know what Minecraft is, it's just one of the most popular video games ever created, ever. It's all the rage with kids ages like six or seven years old, all the way up to adults that like to just have a very relaxing way to unwind with video games. So there are gonna be a few things that you need. First and foremost, you have to go and install Minecraft. It's $20, so that's gonna be about the same amount of money that you're gonna pay for most FPV flight simulators. So that's the first thing you need. Everything else from here on out is free aside from the hardware, which you should already have if you've got any experience with flight simulators. Hardware wise, you're just going to need an FPV radio. Now you need one that has a USB input so that you can actually plug it into your computer and play it. It does not have wireless functionality, so you will need this connected to your computer. I recommend the DJI FPV controller. Super easy to use, especially for somebody that is relatively new to this side of drone piloting. Plus it has that USB interface and it's really, really easy to use once you get it plugged into the computer. The next thing you're gonna need to do is go and download CurseForge. Now what it is is basically a mod interface for video games. It has a section dedicated to Minecraft and there you're going to want to search and install the Minecraft FPV mod. The latest version of it is the one you want to go with. So that'll go into your CurseForge then. From there, you open up Minecraft and you're going to need to put this, and I'm gonna put this up on the screen so that you can see the text, this text into a new multiplayer server. So you're gonna go into multiplayer, you're gonna select new server, and then you're gonna put this into the bar that pops up to find a new server or create a new server. This will then take you to the FPV server. So we've got everything we need set up and ready to go. So on CurseForge here, I'm gonna to go to play, and then that's going to load. The loading screens on this, this is my first critique of this uh, setup, this mod. Loading screens are a little annoying and you have to click through quite a few menus to get to where you're finally going. So we'll click play here. See it's preparing at the bottom and it'll open up the Minecraft screen here 
in the center. So we're going to go ahead and just blow this up because this is the window that we're going to need. Okay, so you will see here that we have our Minecraft Java edition with our mod installed. I already went ahead and installed it. Remember, if you don't install the mod via CurseForge and then open Minecraft via CurseForge, you won't be able to access the FPV simulator. So what we're going to do is go into multiplayer. And a little earlier on in the video, I had some text up on the screen. This is what you're going to plug in to add a server online, a multiplayer server online. That's the FPV server. That's what you need to actually use the mod. I've already gone ahead and did that. So I've got that up here in this Minecraft server. You'll see it has an FPV icon to display it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and press play, jump right into it. Okay, so this dropped me in the last place that I was when I was playing with this mod. And uh, there's an actual place that you start. It's got a big welcome sign that somebody built, one of the moderators probably built, and then tons of other stuff that other people built. And that's one of the things, one of the ups I want to give it early on in the video is that there are other users that get on and use this. So they'll build their own obstacles. They'll build little structures, little messages. It's just a really cool community-based thing. And I really enjoyed that. I thought that was one of the cooler features of this FPV mod. So to actually get started, you will have been brought to a prompt or you have to navigate to it. I don't remember. You can do this both on the main screen as well as within the server here is if you see... If you're not familiar with Minecraft, this is in creative mode. There are a few different ways you can play the game. Um, th this is one of them. Creative mode is one of them. Uh, you can float around. This is not the FPV. This is not how the FPV simulator works. <laughs> so uh, this is just one functionality of the server. You can actually play Minecraft in creative mode on the server. So what it means is you're basically in a sandbox. You have access to all of the blocks in the game, all of the different tools and equipment that you can possibly get. It's just a really relaxing way to kick back is just have access to everything and be able to build whatever you want to build now if we want to switch over and fly fpv which is the whole point of this video what we need to do is hit escape and we'll go into our options menu we'll go to controls and we'll click on fpv in the upper right hand corner here now, you'll see I already have my controller set up. To sort of simulate what it's like to set your controller up for the first time, just go down to the calibration wizard, click on that, and then you'll be brought to this menu when you click FPV for the first time, either a new pilot or a returning pilot. Obviously, if you're clicking it for the first time, you are a new pilot. So we're going to click on that. Do you have a controller? That's a gamepad, a radio, TX, whatever. Yes, we do. That's our DJI FPV controller here. So we'll go ahead and we'll click yes. And then we're going to choose the HID interface, which is the controller. Now we have to calibrate our sticks. So we want to center our sticks as best we can. And we want to press proceed. We're going to move our left stick up, recenter, proceed, move our left stick right, recenter, proceed, move our right stick up, recenter, proceed, move our right, oops. Move our right stick right, recenter, proceed. Now we want to move our sticks as far as possible in every direction, making a little square basically. And then you'll see here that our game is responsive to our control inputs on our controller. So everything's good to go. Yes, proceed. Now this is our arming switch, what we use to arm the motors on our FPV drone in the real world. When I'm out actually flying a real FPV drone, I use this switch on the top left of the DJI receiver. I use it forward, or I press it forward to arm the motors. I pull it towards me to disarm the motors. So you'll see when I did that, it's now reading the input on that. It's detecting that this is our arming switch. So we're gonna go ahead and press yes, proceed. It is working. Now, this is something I run into pretty often. It's asking us, should it be flipped? Right now, the controller is being read as the motors are on. That is not the case because the stick is pulled all the way towards me, which is typically how I have them set when I have the drone motors off. So we want to push it forward. It says off on the screen. Now we want to confirm that it is backwards. So we'll click on that. Now it's reading correctly. The stick is pushed forward, which means that the motors are on. They're armed. If we pull it towards us. They're off. Okay, and that's going to be important when we get into the actual simulator. So we'll go ahead and press no proceed. We're ready to fly. So we've got it all done. We'll click done here. So before we move on to actually flying, I do just want to familiarize you a little bit with 
the options menu, the controls menu. If you click on rates, you can come in here and you can actually adjust the rates on the drone and the controller input. I am just going to fly in the standard rates just to give you an idea of what it's like right out of the box. Uh, but you can play with these if you'd like and set them how you prefer if you're familiar with that. If you're not familiar with that, whether you're somebody that doesn't fly, you're a gamer that found this video because it's a Minecraft video and you're looking to learn a little bit more, just get in. Best thing I can say is just play with these because the worst thing that you can do or the worst that happens to you is you just click reset down here and reset them back to normal or you can reference this video and look at the various rates set here these are all the default rates so you can set them back manually that way as well we'll press done you can also go to your drone build section now i haven't figured this out completely but essentially there is a way to configure this so that you're using the drone build exactly how you want it so if you have a particular drone that you fly in real life and you want to duplicate that experience on the simulator as closely to the real world experience as possible you come in here and you can actually set the various different things like your motor kv your battery cells your prop diameter your frame width your frame height you get the picture you can basically tell the game what you're flying and it'll try to replicate that experience as closely as possible last thing is the other settings menu you can come in here and just do like 3d mode for instance stick overlay when your motors are armed uh, there's a variety of different things here you can play with the field of view all that good stuff. I am gonna turn the fisheye lens off just because it sort of looks weird when you're doing a screen recording of it, but any kind of FPV drone or action camera is going to have like, not, I don't wanna say by default, but it has a fisheye look to it because it's usually trying to capture as much of what's in front of it as possible. So it distorts the image while it's recording and then people can go in and edit after the fact and crop in and undistort or de-distort the footage as they need to. So. Typically, you do fly or you do have footage out of your camera, your action camera that is fisheye. We're just going to turn that off for this. I think it's kind of silly to do in a simulator, but there are applications, I guess, if you wanted to get as close to the natural experience as possible. So we'll click done. We'll click done again. We'll click done one more time. And now we are back. Now, here's the thing. If my arm switch my motor arm switch is off i'll go back into the game and i'll be back in creative mode where i can walk around with my my keyboard and my mouse but if i flip it forward you'll see it changed on the screen there in the backdrop i'm in fpv mode now so if i click done and then i go back to game i'm now in fly mode so let's go ahead and fly this thing around a little bit give it a little thrust a little throttle and we are off now, I just want to say this from a personal experience. I've played Minecraft since it sort of came out, which was back when I was in college. I think that was in like 2010 or 2011. It was around then. Um, I was a freshman or sophomore in college at that point. And it was a really great way to pass the time for a stressed out college student because it was just such a relaxing experience. There are some tense parts of Minecraft for sure. There are enemies that they call mobs in the game uh, that come after you and try to throw you off track of what you're trying to do. So there definitely is a stress factor to it, but overall it's just a very peaceful game to play. You can build, you can create. It's an open world sandbox, so really fun. And one of the things that I thought to myself when I got into drones and I was still playing Minecraft pretty consistently was how cool would it be to fly a drone through a Minecraft map and then I found this thing I've known about this for a little while I don't know how long it's been out exactly uh, but when I found out it existed I thought I got to make a video about that at some point and with the weather being sort of eh, in central Pennsylvania right now um, this was the perfect opportunity to sit down in front of the computer and just play Minecraft but play it like a drone pilot so from a FPV simulator standpoint, I want to say this. Oh, there's a pirate ship. There is usually treasure on those when you find those in the game. So you can go in and loot the treasure. It's a sunken ship. Um, anyway, uh, a little off track there. It's just exciting when you find one of these. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this FPV simulator is just how easy it is to set up. Um, I know that there were quite a few menus that we had to click through there, but overall... It's pretty straightforward. You get into the game and the rates that everything is set up by default and the ability to turn the arm switch on and off and calibrating your controller. The whole experience is super easy and not convoluted and nuanced, which is always annoying. Um, a lot of really great FPV simulators out there, but the setup is just terrible. And you know what? This is going to just distract the hell out of me. So I am going to go and loot that pirate chest. 
Sorry, for those of you that are watching this for the FPV value, uh, we gotta do this. And for you Minecrafters, you know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead. It is in creative mode, so I can't actually die or anything like that. I'm in no danger here. But yeah, if you come in here and you look, you can find a whole bunch of treasure. And like, there's just a bunch of carrots and some gunpowder, which is valuable. Uh, potatoes are valuable, as well as the wheat. The rotten flesh, not so much. You can feed that to your dog, I guess, but you can't really do much else with it. But this is what's really cool. Leather cap, aqua infinity, leather pants, protection one. Pretty solid find in a treasure chest. Uh, let's see if there's anything else before we move on, because if there is, oh, yep, another chest. And this is why you always check twice. Oh, there we go. Oh, we have a buried treasure map. I'll take it. I'll use it later. I won't do it on the recording. We have a feather and we have a bunch of paper. Um, so I'm just going to take all that. Sorry, my, my, my inner Minecrafter is coming out and I can't help myself. Okay, I can't see where I'm going because I got my light in my face. Let's just go ahead and break a block or two. There we go. Oh, it's also nighttime, so. This episode of Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots based in the United States. If you are a Part 107 holder, you gotta check out The Droning Company. They've got a second-to-none job board for UAV pilots, plus tons of resources and information to make you a more well-rounded drone professional. Check out their website, thedroningcompany.com. Memberships are nominally priced. You are gonna make back the cost of your membership for one year and then some with your first drone job captured with the droning company's job board or your dedicated remote pilot profile that's right you can set up your own profile it's a nice little area to put all of your work your portfolio as a uav professional all in one spot that you can then use to get jobs flying your drone check them out online the droningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms okay so we got what we needed there um, I will say, let's go ahead and go back into FPV mode so you can see what I'm saying. It is not super convenient to fly at nighttime in this simulator because unless you have a light source like lava or a torch or a glowstone brick, um, it's, it's hard to see. And, uh, you know, I know that that's how it would really be if you flew an FPV drone at nighttime, but in terms of like practicing, uh, in a simulator setting, it's just not convenient. I wish that the people that created this mod put it so that and it's able you're able to do this made it so that like this server was in all the time daytime type of thing because otherwise it's just sort of hard to fly and not super convenient um so that that is a bummer is it does cycle from day to night uh pretty regularly just like it would in any other version of the game uh and it, it does get frustrating so we'll keep that in mind when we're going to actually purchase minecraft and download this fpv simulator that is a mark against it that the nighttime flight is really just not very convenient right there what you see is an a uh, ender portal this takes you to the base game's boss final boss the ender dragon and you have to fight him or her or whatever it is uh and when you do that, you, you beat the game technically. You can continue playing and just use it as the sandbox that it is. And then there are some other expansions of the game that added more bosses. So there's plenty to do. But that was the base game's original end game boss, the Ender Dragon. Uh, we'll go into that in just a second. I do want to take the opportunity here while it's nighttime and not super conducive to showing you like how cool this simulator is to just give a shout out to a few of my buddies. Uh, I have a few friends. Uh, one of them is my cousin, Matt. Matt helps me out a lot with drone stuff. He goes with me for client shoots, helps out with Drone Geek production stuff. Uh, and then he's got a couple buddies that he introduced me to that have since become my buddies as well. His friend Gerardo, his friend Gael, and his friend Gonzalo. And all of those guys are my friends too now. Uh, but they are hardcore gamers. Like, they love playing video games. And we play pretty regularly on Xbox. We don't play Minecraft much anymore. Uh, but we used to play Minecraft together. And that's around the time that I found out about this mod. Uh, was when we were playing Minecraft together. And I never got a chance to really make the video until now. Uh, but I do want to give them a shout out because had they not reinvigorated my interest in Minecraft a couple of years ago, uh, or however long ago it was now at this point, I would not have probably found this mod and I would not have been able to make this video. So this video is not possible without Gonzalo, Gael, Gerardo, and of course Matt. 
So thank you guys. Really appreciate it. I have a lot of fun playing video games with you guys. Um, I hope that maybe you'll try this out as well if you get the chance. And one of those guys I want to give a particular shout out to, Gerardo. Uh, he's a really avid gamer. He's got a YouTube channel I'm going to link down below because I don't remember what his name is. I am subscribed and I do watch his stuff, uh, but I believe he's Couch Potato on YouTube. Uh, if not, I apologize, Gerardo. Uh, his my, or his uh, YouTube, I almost said Minecraft, uh, his YouTube channel is linked down below. If you like video games, you like video game content, definitely check out his channel. It is still nighttime out, um, but this is a great opportunity for me to show you what the starting seed in the game looks like. This is what it looks like when you spawn in originally, and this is what I really love again about that community aspect of this server, is look at all of the stuff people have come in and built in this server. There's obviously some people from France, or people that are fans of France, or the French nation, I, I don't know. Anyway, there's a Brazilian flag. There's just all sorts of stuff through here, and this is one of the cool things about this game uh, that really excites me and I think is really unique and you can't really replicate in any other FPV simulator is just how dynamic some of this stuff is. Okay, it is beginning to be daytime and I actually flew directly upwards from that starting point or that starting area and I found this whole build up here, which is kind of cool. I'm not sure why it's raining in that one particular spot. I wonder if there's something that somebody built or did that I'm not aware of. Anyway, uh, we'll go back down towards the map here. Just go ahead and drop it in. You come in and look at the obstacle. Was that, invis was that invisible? Was that an invisible thing I just ran into? I don't know. Anyway, there's obstacle courses up here. Somebody took the time to build all of this, which is really cool. This is reminiscent of uh, the Nether, or actually more closely resembles PewDiePie's castle in his uh, classic Minecraft run that he did, that series that he did. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, a nod to him. I don't know if it's intended to be a nod to him, but I'm going to take it that way. Uh, yeah, just very cool stuff. Now let's talk a little bit while you can see me flying around. Let's... Mine pig, get out of here. Sorry, but get out of here. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about is this Minecraft mod the right FPV simulator for you? Now, if you're looking for something that's totally accurate to a real life FPV flight experience, I'm going to say this is not what you're looking for. Is this so far off that I would never recommend it? No. In fact, it's it's pretty darn close, much closer than I thought it was going to be in terms of an FPV flight simulator. But if you're looking for a real true-to-form flight simulation for FPV drones, you're better off with something like Liftoff. Um, it just captures the experience a little bit more closely to what it's actually like in real life. Now, if you're looking for a fun time that has a close enough experience value and has the ability to do all of this, build your own course. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the Minecraft FPV mod is perfect. And here's why I really like the fact that you're able to build your own courses is because in a lot of other FPV simulators, they have courses that you can run so that you're following a set path and honing your skills as a pilot flying through different obstacles and areas and stuff. But it's not always reflective of the variety of skill sets that are out there. You might be a beginner, but you might be a little more adept at flying FPV right out of the gate. So the beginner course may not be hard enough for you. That's not a big deal. You can jump up to the, the intermediate course, but maybe that's too hard. You might be an expert. You might be an expert FPV flyer. And on the simulator, maybe the hardest difficulty isn't hard enough. This gives you complete customization in terms of how hard you make your obstacles, how hard you make your course, and what you can fly through. You can actually build statues and flags and all sorts of different stuff that you can fly around rather than just rings and hoops. It's, it's a full customization thing that I think gets undersold when you're talking about FPV flight simulators. Um, it, you can literally do whatever you want when it comes to setting up your course. You can make it as hard as you want, as easy as you want, whatever, anything in between. And you can also theme it however you want to. If you wanna have a My Little Pony theme, for God's sakes, you can fly a My Little Pony theme and have a lot of fun with it. If you wanna do something like the one up here that's like reminiscent of the PewDiePie Minecraft run, this, you can do that too. It's the, the, the possibilities are absolutely endless and I think that's a huge mark up 
for this FPV simulator and why I would recommend it even to the most proficient FPV pilots. So, final thoughts. Would I recommend this simulator? Yes, 110%. I think even for the most proficient FPV pilots, this is definitely worth the download and install. Uh, it's a good experience. Is it totally accurate? No, but none of the simulators really are. Uh, it's just a matter of what you're willing to put up with and what you deem acceptable in terms of your virtual practice for FPV. If you are looking for something that is more closely uh, accurate to a real life experience, this may not be the simulator for you, but I would still encourage you to check it out because bottom line is it's a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, and that map customization, like I said, is worth its weight in gold. You can literally do whatever obstacle course you want. The sky's the limit. Just like it is with Minecraft, the mod for the FPV simulator is no different. So to wrap this video up, I am going to just do it a little bit differently this time. I'm going to wrap it up with some ripping and tearing on the FPV simulator for Minecraft. Just a quick reminder, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Helps get the video out into the algorithm in front of viewers like you. Also, if you really, really liked this video, you love drone content shot by drones for drone pilots and about drones, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Helps me out a lot. We are over the thousand subscriber threshold for monetization. We're working on the watch hours now, but let's be honest, I never wanted to stop at a thousand subscribers. It's just a mark that we had. So if you haven't subscribed, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And if you really, really like this video, you love drone content, Maybe you love Minecraft content. This probably won't be the last video we do on the FPV simulator. Hit the bell icon too. It'll give you a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek. I'm out of here. See ya.